All right, algebra one. Welcome back, guys. Here we go. Chapter two, section five. Everybody open up your textbooks to page 81. All right, make sure again, I know you've heard it a hundred times and I hope I don't have to say it a hundred more. You have to have your textbook open as you go through these notes. All right, so we are doing section five, distributive property, stuff that I know you guys have done, but um, it comes back, all right? It's gonna come back again and again and again, so you gotta make sure that you're good, you're confident with it. Um, we're also gonna be going over some very important terms that again, you may already know, but if you don't, you have to get really comfortable with this, all right? So as the notes say right there, six key terms, you need to know them. So find them all. Um, if you look on page 81, they list all the key terms as far as just what the term is on the upper left-hand corner of page uh, 81, or in other words, the first page of the section. But you have to look throughout the section to find those key terms, all right? Next thing, copy the examples that are in the key concept charts on page 81. You'll find the chart about halfway down the page, and the examples are on the right side of that chart. I think those examples are helpful and kind of guide you guys through this, all right? So let's take care of that, pause the video, rewind it, all that stuff, take care of copying all that down. Now this stuff right here again, maybe review, it should be. So what I've done is I've just given you a, um, an expression, all right, mathematical expression, there you got negative two x plus x minus seven plus three y, all right? So what they would ask you to do is find all the different parts, all right? So you'll notice off to the right-hand side there, all of them are terms. So if they say list the terms, you will literally say first term, negative 2x, second term, 1x. Pay close attention to that. Notice there's not a one written, there never will be, but that is still a coefficient, which we'll come back to, all right? The third term is negative seven, and then the fourth term is that three y. So they're all terms. Now, which one of them is the constant? That would be the negative seven. Notice I keep saying negative seven because when you isolate that seven, the sign that's in front of it is locked in with it. So that makes it a negative seven. It's a constant because it has no variable. It's a number by itself. Now, coefficients, those are the numbers in front of variables. So a negative two, again, a positive one, they won't write it but that is in front of the x, and then a positive three, that's in front of y. So the coefficients are just the numbers in front of the variables. You don't actually include the variable there. And then the final piece, which of these are like terms? Meaning basically they're in the same family, okay? Like terms would share the same variable, and if that variable had an exponent, then you would have to pay attention to what that exponent is. So the only like terms you're having here are the negative two, that's in front of x, and the positive one, that's in front of x. All right, let's move down here. Last little note, when using the distributive property, guys, you're multiplying. Okay, so in case you didn't know that, when we distribute, we multiply. All right, let's go into some example problems here. Let's jump into it. So what I really like to do, and I think you should do it too, is show where you are distributing those numbers, okay? So anytime a number or a variable is directly connected to parentheses, it's just outside of it, or for that matter, it could even be within its own set of parentheses, you will distribute one term at a time into the parentheses, and you distribute it to all parts of the parentheses. Many times students will only distribute the two to the x, and then they think they're done. But you have to distribute two to x and two to three. So two times x is two x. Two times three gives us six. Boom, there we go. That's the first example problem. Distribute it to both parts, multiply, and then take a look at your final answer there, and then always check, are there any like terms I can put together? In this case, no, there's not. All right, example two. Now, you're looking at two sets of parentheses, except that the set on the right, the negative two x, really that's only one term, okay? But I just put it in parentheses 
because a lot of times that's what you would do if there's a negative sign. So now we're going to take that negative 2x and distribute it into everything in the other set. So what I always recommend is pick the term that basically is one term. So negative 2x, really, that's one term. You're going to distribute it into the parentheses where you have x minus 5 because there's two terms there. All right? So negative 2x multiplied by x would be a negative 2, and x times x would make x squared. Please pay attention to that. So many students will make that mistake and not square x. Okay, so again, negative 2 is, there's not ever going to be written, but there's a 1 there. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. x multiplied by x is x squared. Then you have that, again, negative 2, multiply it by negative 5. Remember, negative times a negative makes a positive 10. And don't forget that x. The x that's with the negative 2 has nothing to be combined with, so it just drops directly down into our answer. Now take a look. Negative 2x squared plus 10x. Are there like terms? No. Why not? because one of those x's is squared and the other one is not. So they are not like terms. All right, box it, let's move on. Next one. Oh, we're dealing with a fraction, all right? But it's a nice fraction, okay, to some degree here. You have a distributive property with a half, all right? Same concept, don't change what you do. Distribute into the parentheses, so one half multiplied by two is the same thing as saying take that two and cut it in half. What do you get? One. And then that x drops down directly into the answer. Then plus and take six and cut that in half and you get three. That's it. Okay. So distribute it into the parentheses. So if we were to expand this out, just to show you every little step here, you're really doing this, all right? You're taking one half and you are multiplying it by two x. You're figuring out what is that and you're gonna add that and you're taking one half and you're also multiplying it by six. So really that's what we're doing, all right? And I understand that a lot of you could do that step in your head but I wanted to show you just in case you want to expand it and really show every little step there. And this right here is what gives us the one X and this right here is what gives us the three. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a visual aid for you. All right, we are almost done guys. Let's do example four. Now, it's kind of like we have a double distributive property, right? So the five, has to go to the 6 and the x. And over here, I got a negative 2. That's going to go to that x, and it's going to go to that negative 2. So the first thing is distribute, then distribute again, then look to combine like terms. So what is 5 times 6? Because we have to distribute there, giving us 30. 5 times x, giving us 5x. Now look at the other side. Distribute again, negative two, distributed over here to x gives us negative two x, and then negative two distributed to another negative two, negative times a negative equals a positive four. Now step back, we have some like terms. Let's see, where are they? Right here is one of them. They both have x and their exponent is the same. Then we have another set right here. These guys are both constants, meaning no variable with them. They're also like terms. So 30 combined with four. Now, when you do like terms, that's only addition and subtraction, all right? That's not multiplication. So 30 combined with four, giving you 34. Then 5x, notice minus 2x, pay attention to your signs, they're very important, is going to give you a positive 3x. 
All right, and I'm good with that order. You want to have 3x plus 34, that's correct. 34 plus 3x, that's fine too. Okay, good. Now we are almost done. Last example problem to go. Same concept. We got to distribute, distribute, and again, you will do another distribute, distribute. Okay, so 4 times x is 4x. 4 times a negative 5. Again, pay attention to your signs. Then you have 3 times 3, so that's going to give you 9. And 3x, three, 3 times x. Okay, now let's take a look. Where are the like terms? We got like terms right here. They are constants. And we have like terms right here, and they have the variable combined with them. So I see the 4x. I see a positive 3x giving us 7x, okay? That looks a little like a 2. So let's get that away. Okay. There we go. Now, negative 20, positive 9. So negative 20, that's the bigger number here. So our answer coming from that's going to be a negative. Take 9 away, giving you 11. So 7x minus... 11. All right, guys, that covers the whole concept there. That is section five. Watch this video. Pay close attention to your signs. Pay close attention as you distribute. Don't forget to look to combine like terms at the end if you can. All right, guys, do the best you can. Keep working hard. I'll see you in the next one.